Every 10 to 15 years, a new generational talent comes into the NBA. In the 60s, there was Kareem. In the 70s, there was Bill Walton. In the 90s, there was Tim Duncan. In the 2000s, there was LeBron. In the 2010s, there was Anthony Davis. And in the 2020s, there's Victor Wembanyama. But what if I told you there was a Victor Wembanyama type prospect that entered the league in the 1980s that's almost completely forgotten about today? The player I'm talking about is Ralph Sampson, the unstoppable 7'4 big man from Virginia who won three National Player of the Year awards. So what happened to the career of Ralph Sampson, and why didn't he reach the heights of NBA superstardom? The story of Sampson starts at Harrisonburg High School in Harrisonburg, Virginia, where Sampson led his team to two state championships in 1978 and 1979, averaging a ridiculous 30 points, 19 rebounds, and 7 blocks a game. The hype for Sampson was real. In fact, many were comparing him to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bill Walton, two of the greatest NBA prospects ever, as just an 18-year-old. As a senior in high school, Sampson was on the cover of Sports Illustrated and is often regarded as the most recruited player of his time. Sampson ultimately decided to stay in his home state and attend the University of Virginia, a program that only had one NCAA tournament appearance before Sampson arrived. As a freshman in 1980, Sampson immediately made an impact, averaging 15 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 blocks a game. And already in his early career, Sampson had a choice to make, stay at the University of Virginia or go to the NBA at the number one overall pick, which in 1980 belonged to the Larry Bird-led Celtics. Sampson's decision altered the history of the NBA forever, as his decision to return to college meant that the Celtics were not interested in keeping the number one overall pick. Instead, the Celtics traded their pick to the Warriors for Robert Parrish and a number three overall pick, which turned out to be Kevin McHale. And as we all know, the rest is history, as the Celtics would win three of the next six NBA titles with Parrish and McHale. Meanwhile, Sampson stayed at Virginia for all four years of college, putting up similar stats as his freshman year, but accumulating three National Player of the Year awards along the way, tying Bill Walton for the most National Player of the Year awards in men's college basketball history. He would lead the Cavaliers to a Final Four and an Elite Eight and create a winning tradition still seen today at Virginia. Sampson declared for the 1983 draft, and the team lucky enough to select him was the Houston Rockets. Immediately when he got to the league, Sampson averaged 21 points and 11 rebounds a game, made the All-Star team as a rookie, and of course, won Rookie of the Year. Despite the individual success, the Rockets were still the worst team in the league and had the first overall pick in the 1984 draft, where they took University of Houston big man Akeem Olajuwon. While many criticized the Rockets' decision to select Akeem, they believed the Rockets would fail with two seven-footers in the front court. But the Rockets actually improved their record by 19 games, finishing the 1984-85 season with a 48-34 record. Both Sampson and Olajuwon made the All-Star team, and Sampson secured second-team All-NBA honors in his second season, averaging a 22-10. The following season, Sampson again made the All-Star team, leading the Rockets to a 51-31 record while averaging a 19-11. But this is where things started to change for Sampson. On March 24, 1986, the Houston Rockets played the Boston Celtics. During this game, Sampson went up for a rebound and fell straight on his back. He laid motionless for minutes and was ultimately stretchered off the court. Doctors feared Samson broke his back. And while Samson was lucky to only come away from this incident with a severely bruised back, things were never the same. Samson's knees couldn't hold him up any longer. And after the 1986 season, Samson's third in the league, he played over 60 games in a season only one more time in his career. And in 1992, just nine years after he was drafted with the first overall pick, Sampson played his last NBA game. While Sampson doesn't hold the bust label because he ended his career a four-time All-Star and All-NBA player, you can't help but think what could have been. Sampson had the hype of Victor Wembanyama and proved he could be a major force in the NBA in his short career. But now, the man that once held the basketball world captive is now the man that many forget even exists. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe for more NBA videos like this.